Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to be working in the front flower bed here right beside the front porch. This is what we call just the Hortzman bed because it has a dwarf blue atlas cedar, which is the Hortzman blue atlas cedar. So we're going to come in here and uh, get my violas out because, you know, it's June and I still have violas in the ground. So we're going to get those out, get the bed cleaned up. And then we're going to go ahead and do our summer planting of really simple this year, keeping it keeping it easy peasy. We are going to do the Sun Patience Compact Purple and then the Sweet Caroline Bewitched Green with MB Sweet Potato Vine in front of that. So let me show you the space and give you an idea. Um, we've been in this bed many times before, but yes, it is right here to give you perspective on the corner of the house, front porch of course there, and then this is the space that we are going to be um, working on today. We've got a couple of things we need to do in here. One, obviously we need to take out the violas and the uh, nice batch of weeds that is growing in and amongst these violas have not been in this bed. I have not touched this bed since this fall. Um, you were here when we planted it, when we planted the beautiful tulips. They were gorgeous, did a fantastic job. Violas are still going. Now, for some of you who live in cooler climates, you may be thinking, well, Jenny, you know, we use violas all the time in the spring, early summer. That's because you're in a cooler climate. Remember, we are North Carolina Zone 7B. Violas, pansies, those are going to be our fall, winter, early spring annuals because they are cool weather annuals. They love it really cool. We have been blessed really, really nicely here in North Carolina with an exceptionally cool, damp spring. Typically, um, this time of year, we are we're in full on summer. We just had Memorial Day weekend, right? I think we broke a record for how cool it was on Memorial Day. Really, really cool. So that is why these still look really nice from a distance. But when you get up close, uh, you will notice that they are getting way, way leggy. We are starting to have some areas that are um, dying back and everything. So these are coming out. Uh, yeah, so these are well past their prime as far as I've got all my money worth out of them. Very happy with them. Next, we do have, this is the, like I said, the Dwarf Hortzman. It's a blue atlas cedar. Now, you may be looking at this and notice that she might have a <laughs> slight lean to her. Yes, because uh, when we had the major Arctic winds that came through right before Christmas, this bed took the brunt of it and this tree took the brunt of it. As it was happening, because we got massive, like sustained winds, and I would say massive. I'm not, you know, I don't even, I don't know what the records were, like as far as the wind gusts, but it was really sustained winds that just pounded this area and it pounded this tree. So as a, as the day went on, I saw it leaning a little bit more and more. It does have a tilt to it, um, but it is not wobbly at all. It's firm in the ground. The good thing about it having a tilt is that the side is filling in quite nicely. Jerry's going to come back. He is uh, at an appointment right now. So when he gets back, he's going to um, help me and we're going to kind of shore her up a little bit, get her stake back up. Uh, yeah, so that's what's going on with that. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to trim the tiolas. Those are the nice, shiny, dark green um, shrubs in the very back of this bed. Tea olives, sweet osmanthus, um, what else do we call people call them? Um, yeah, sweet olive. They come by different names, right? So it's really regional. This is a southern plant because it likes it really warm. We're going to come in here and just shape these up. Your tea olives bloom on old growth and they are a fall bloomer. So fall, winter, early spring is when they will put on the little tea tiny flowers that smell divine. It is a, like a jasmine honeysuckle fragrance to it. One of my absolute favorite shrubs ever. We have this as a hedge because right behind here are our air conditioning heating units. So these hide that from the front of the house and works really nicely. So we're going to trim these up, shape them up because they bloom on old growth. I need to shape them up now. That way they have plenty of time to put on new growth through the growing season and have their bud set happen then. That way I get my wonderful uh, flowers in the fall. So what we're going to do first is the most uh, daunting task out of all of this is we're going to go ahead and get all of the weeds and the violas 
out of the bed. So we're gonna get this whole area cleaned up. And that's what's gonna take me the longest out of all this is getting that cleaned up. And then once we get that cleaned up, then we'll go ahead and move over here and I will get my um, tea olives trimmed up. Let me show you the plants right quick that we were working with. I have Johnny here. Um, and so I brought, just grabbed one of each of the plants. We have the Sun Patience Compact Purple. You saw me use this in the berm and right beside of the berm. So that will tie all of this in together. These will get to be about, in the landscape, they can be like two and a half feet tall. So those are gonna go in the back. Mass planting of that will be beautiful against that Hortzman and the tea olives. And then coming along the edge in the front, this is the Bewitched Green Within Me, Envy Sweet Potato Vine. And it will um, not get super tall, but it will spread. So we're gonna space those about every 18 inches apart. And then I am gonna go ahead and just amend my soil with the black gold natural and organic raised bed potting mix. So we have used this a lot this year. Um, I am, I've got six bags because we're just gonna go ahead and come in here and just kind of shore up this area. This space is always what I use for annuals. And then me ripping out these plants, of course you try to get all the soil off that you possibly can, but inevitably you're gonna lose some soil. So we want to come back in here and replenish that soil so when these new annuals go in, they have um, lots of beautiful nutrition available to them. So uh, the not so fun, glamorous part, just the grunt work is I'm gonna set the camera up and then get this bed cleaned up neat and tidy. And then I'll meet you back here in just a second. All right, my friends, so we got all of the violas and the weeds and the grass out of this flower bed. Uh, it just already, you know, getting it nice and clean and neat and tidy, I tell you, just makes a world of difference just looking at it that way. The uh, quote worst part was kind of right here where Brenna is sitting. That is an irrigation box that has our valves in there. When the fellows reseeded the grass in the fall, we had some fescue get here and it loved it right here. So trying to dig that out was, uh, that was the more challenging part, but the violas up here just popped out of the ground really nicely. You can see um, how nice and rich this soil is. We have put land and sea multiple times in here and really have worked this area over the past couple of years because this is our annual flower, um, bed and so we want to give it lots of good food so that way these plants can produce loads and loads of beautiful flowers the tea olives they don't really care they're just hardy anyway speaking of tea olives we're going to move on and get these pruned if you have shrubs flowering flowering shrubs uh, not really trees, I guess, but more like the shrubs. So you have flowering shrubs that bloom on old growth. The best time to prune them is after they bloom. I could have pruned these earlier. It's just now, we're just now getting to it. But when you have plants that bloom on old growth, you've got to make sure they have plenty enough time to put on new growth throughout that growing season before going into winter, or in this case, fall, because these are fall bloomers, so they have plenty of time that they can put on new growth and put on those new bud sets. There's basically two ways that you could prune these tea olives. One, if you had electric pruners, you could come in here and make really quick work of this and just shape them up. That is what I'm trying to do here because I do not want them to get too tall and leggy. I want them to stay nice and tight and compact and nice and beautiful green to give me a screen. So you could do that. 
I, in this case, I'm gonna use my clippers, my hand pruners, and I am gonna go do it by hand. The reason I'm doing it here, yes, it's going to take longer, but it's gonna give me a cleaner, neater look. And since this is on the front of our house, um, and you don't, we don't typically walk by here a lot, but still it's on the front of the house and you want it to look neat. When you're using the electric pruners, of course you're gonna cut leaves, and then those leaves will seal over and have like brown edges until the new growth flushes out. I want to avoid all that. I want them to look nice and neat and tidy. So I'm going to come in here with my hand pruners. I'm going to show you how I do it. It's not rocket science. Basically, you just want to shape them up. Give them a nice, pretty um, look to them. Uh, what we're going to do, I'll go ahead and show you. Let's see, here is a good limb. This is a good example right here. You can see how these limbs right here are leaning out. Now we have had rain, but I don't want them to continue to grow like that. I want them to be upright and not coming out. So what you can do and what I'll do is I've got my Felcos here and I'm going to come in. Uh, let's see if I can show you right here. So right here you will see that we have some leaves right here. I'm going to go above those leaves and I'm going to take it and I'm going to prune it just like that. So immediately the weight comes off and it'll go back up. And you're gonna kind of prune in that same general area. So this one, there's leaves right here. We're gonna come in and prune like that. So that way the plant will go up and everywhere where you just had that cut. So these two leaves right here will now form branches and nice and tight and compact. Uh, so that is what we are going to do. This is going to be uh, a little bit a slow tedious work but it's also relaxing work and then once we start to put the annuals in the ground then that goes super fast the pulling the weeds the grass and trimming the tea olives those are the ones that take a little bit longer but it's once a year i'm happy to do it i'm excited to do it and it's cloudy so there you go on that we're not sweating to death yay all right we're going to get these things pruned All right, my friends, so I got a lot of great, wonderful work done. We got the tea olives pruned back, just did it with my hand clippers, right? Got those all pruned back. Went ahead and got the raised bed mix laid out. I only used six bags. Um, I didn't, this soil has been worked so many times, I didn't feel like we needed to add a ton of this because it's already really nice, nice soil, um, nice and healthy. So I added six bags of that, kind of spread it out, and then went ahead and got the plants laid out as well. Before I laid my plants down, I went ahead and laid down the Proven Winners Continuous Release Fertilizer just kind of broadcast it all over the whole bed just to make it easier than having to do each individual hole and I had some biotone in Johnny so I went ahead and gave that a nice sprinkle as well down in to where we're going to be planting these annuals. I don't always put biotone down with my annuals but this area is not on irrigation. It's definitely going to be pretty neglected. It's got to uh, survive and thrive on its own so I went ahead and threw some down on that and then while I'm here I went ahead and gave the Portsman and the tea olives some holly tone. They are both acid loving shrubs trees and so I had it went ahead and just gave it a real sprinkle nothing you know rocket science about this I do it once a year just encourage some new growth some nice happy new growth and just throw it down when I get done with this whole bed I've got a hose that is connected right here behind the tea olives so I'll get everybody nice and well watered in uh, Jerry came home for lunch and he was or brought me lunch and he came out of the front porch he was like what is that smell I was like <laughs> uh, that'd be a little biotone a holly tone so if you know then you know I said don't worry I'm gonna water it in and it'll go away 
So let me show you the design that I have here with the Sun Patients and the Sweet Potato Vine. It really kind of turned out differently than what I thought because once I got in here with the bed and seeing how the Hortzman is growing, basically what I ended up doing is doing two nice big pockets of the Sun Patients, right? So one here by the porch and then one down further. And then the Sweet Potato Vine, just basically kind of a straight row all the way down. I did not plant any of the Sun Patients right here in front of the Hortzman because it has this beautiful low branch sticking out. And I didn't want to hide that with the sun patient is getting you know almost two feet tall so i did go up a little bit and do a little bit of a double row right there with a sweet potato vine so that way it can fill in and grow underneath the tree very nicely you'll also notice that i did not really go very very close to the house at all and or behind the horseman there's an empty space back there you're not going to see that and two i need to leave an access point here because like i said there is the hose back there we've got the lighting um, the landscape lighting box is all back there and we do travel this little area right here quite frequently so i needed to leave that open that is why i did not push it all the way back there if you wanted to put sun patients back there in that back corner you certainly could um, i just i used all the ones that i had well i had some more left over but i just kind of like it that way right so give give everybody some room to breathe and do just a nice job with that the color contrast is going to be fantastic because you've got those sun patients those nice darker kind of a green foliage that has almost a little bit of a a burgundy black hue to it those nice big huge flowers on it i mean just so so happy and it's going to pair against this horseman and the tea olives quite nicely and then of course our bewitched green with envy a nice chartreuse color that is going to pop and give me a nice explosion of color all the way down I may have planted these or placed these a little bit too close to um, the edge of the grass. Time, <laughs> time will tell. And so we will see if, uh, if it gets really aggressive and starts to go out into the grass. But that is the beautiful thing about sweet potato vine is that it handles being pruned really, really nicely. So we'll see. I just wanted to have a nice big solid um, border here with that chartreuse green. So that would definitely do the kick trick and i'm going to use my power planter auger i am using the five inch heavy duty tip on this and i am using just a 20 volt battery um excuse me the 20 volt drill it's just a regular drill dewalt drill because this area is so nice and loose and i have a ton of annuals and it's lighter so i can uh, knock these out really easily so we're gonna just dig some holes and plop these babies in the ground like i said all the fertilizer everything else is already in there so don't have to worry about that get them in the ground and get them well watered and then today's job will be over
right, my friends, today's project is complete. <sighs> it was a doozy. It didn't seem to be very daunting, but uh, yeah, it turned out to kind of kick my butt a little bit today. Jenny's a little tired, but it looks so good. Um, and basically I can, we're done with this bed minus, we are gonna go ahead and put um, some mulch on this bed, but we need to trim our boxwoods first and then we'll mulch that whole area in front of the house. So it's just gonna kind of hang out and wait for right now. And then Jerry has to <laughs> uh, see if he's gonna straighten up old, old hoardy right there. But everybody looks fantastic. Nice pop of color, nice uh, cleaned bed. All the weeds are gone. Tea olives are trimmed, just fantastic. So of course we will keep you updated on this flower bed as we uh, go through this season. But as always, thanks so much for going to the creek side. We hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspiring. We'll see you on the next video. Bye friends.